All right, Legends, a little bit of a late one on the trades front. I have been on and ahhing about this decision. Well, my second trade decision. The first one was very, very simple for my side. I just want to remove a little bit of the dead wood and hopefully, you know, for those that do hold him, he comes back and, and scores really well with the very low break even, that of Joe Chan. But unfortunately, he uh, yeah, has some, obviously the issue with his hand, the infection there and it does sound like Glory is very likely to keep that spot going forward on that left edge for the Storm next to Munster if he you know, ends up playing. And I very much hope that that he's you know well. There's some whispers about him not playing this week. I'm not sure if that's correct tonight, but we'll uh, we'll get some further information on that. Uh, in the tips video, I did mention that it has been raining all day up the coast and it is still raining. So there you go. A little update on that front. I still think Ponga is a terrific purchase, guys, for anyone looking to grab him. Don't base your trades off one week of information, right? So if, yeah, let's just say it is a wet game for him. You know, there's a, there's a fair bit of drop ball across the game and, and he scores a 48, right? That's still decent. He's pretty well priced around that point and you're buying him for more than one week. The stats say that he's going to be great. So if you're interested in Ponga, get him. The trades that I'm going to be doing, and it is a bit more of a longer term play, it is going to be Joey Chan and Morgan Smitty's to Blaze Talangi, who went up 40k last week. So we're going to get him in now and, and get into those price rises. And then Clint Gutherson, who's a 586. It's a little bit of an out there pick for myself, but the stats do not lie with Clint that he gets involved in absolutely everything when Moses is out of this team. So, you know, the 60 average, it's uh, almost Cleary and, and Hines level for this year at the moment. And the reasoning for getting rid, of, getting rid of Smitty's for those that haven't followed throughout the week is just the main the main reason here. Obviously, he starts to lose money now as well with a couple of low ones, but he doesn't have the ceiling of a couple of the other players that I have in my team that would potentially be trade outs this week. And it's that of you know Lusick or potentially Taylor May. When you look at Morgan Smitty's, he's not going to be you know have, doesn't have any chance of being a keeper. And look, he could serve a bit of a purpose throughout the. The buy period for sure, but I also have, well, I had five Raiders in my team. So now removing him drops that down, that number down to four. We've still got a while until they've got to buy him. We're likely to be, you know, probably holding two, I'd say by that point in terms of Raiders. And I'll discuss all the other options as well that I had. But Taylor, Taylor May, he has an opportunity to become a keeper. And that's what I bought him for, to have a dual position, non-origin keeper. Right, so get through the buy in round six and then go from there. And, and this week, we hope to see a very good score from him. And if he does, then you can go, okay, well, maybe he's the one that I keep over maybe a Karaz or something who's had you know a lot of low scores as well. We might end up having to trade a Geordie Rappiner as well. So when I look at this you know situation here in my you know, wing fullbacks and or well, my wing fullbacks especially, trading in Gutho means I have five, so it is a little bit of an overload, but with Taylor May out. Next week, if I do get a knock to one of these guys in a Karaz, Papenhausen, or Rappner, I have Gutho to come in and play fullback, uh, wing fullback next week, which is cool. So that's a win to start things off on, on that front. There's also a world where I decide to try and trade out Jacob Karaz in this week coming up. And if he, if he goes poorly again, I do have, you know, I do currently have four Bulldogs and he's one of the guys that I do think could be expendable for my side. If everything goes well, I have enough wing fullbacks for next week with Gusso coming back into that spot. It could be a Karaz that's the one that's traded out. And we do have to find a way to get to pretend, either Nico Hines next week or Cleary, back to Cleary in round seven. And if I was to do a trade next week, this extra 127K in the bank by getting Gutho allows me to do a few moves. And if if, you know, if Karaz and, and Cotter were to stay the same price, I could go Karaz and Cotter which would end up with me having about 1.34 million bucks, I believe is the is the number I end up with, 1.35, right? So if I was to get Heinz, it leaves me with about 410K next week. So what we do need, <laughs> it's not gonna work, but a really low score from Crichton so that I can buy him next week or a, uh, uh, yeah, it's, that's not gonna fit actually, but um, it's it's optimistic, right? Uh, or, you know, Cotter goes absolutely bonkers and goes, you know, 660 and then Karaz goes well as well. But then I wouldn't want to sell Karaz if he went well next week. So that's the, like, the fun hope that it all works out that way. But unlikely on that front. But I still have 410K 
to be able to get someone in at that, you know, under that price. Hopefully there's someone, there usually is someone that pops up each and every week around that price to be able to get Nathan, uh, Nathan, Nathan Hines, Nico Hines back into my side next week. So that's the potential option if, you know, we're looking to move on from guys that do play Origin and Cotter is one of them. Just depends how he scores next week. If he comes out with an absolute banger, we won't look to do that trade and we'll maybe reassess and, and look to either Nico or to Nathan in, in round seven. So the 127 just gives me a little bit of flexibility to be able to make some moves next week, which will be cool there on that front. Gutho, the play with him is more around the, the fact that through the origin period, he was very helpful last year. And if Moses gets anywhere near that origin setup as well, then, then he becomes a really cool guy to own through that time. And I have three eels and they have a buy in round nine as well. So I do have the situation currently where I have four guys after you know, four guys in the dogs. I have three guys in the eels and now four in the raiders. So that's something to note over the next few weeks that I hopefully can get my raiders down to three and at least three and then get my dogs down to three as well over the next bunch of weeks. Cause we've still got, you know, the dogs a little bit of time in round eight to get theirs. Um, and then the Raiders in round 10, obviously for their first buy. Um, and if you wanted to check out all the buy schedule stuff, jump back into the impact of the next three games video that I, I pop out each and every week, you'll see the, the uh, thumbnail there in that one. If you scroll up a little bit on my videos on my page and a big thank you to all of you guys for coming in and, uh, yeah, watching this one here. Guys, if you're uh, made it to this far, thank you very much. But uh, tell me, what are you up to on the weekend? Are you doing anything fun, anything strange, anything yeah, out there? Who are you going to see? Who are you hanging out with? Something like that would be cool uh, in the comments. I'll um, have a little read about that, get to know you guys a little bit better. The people that um, yeah watch potentially watch hours of me every week, I'd like to get, in, get to know you guys back a little bit there as well. So, Gutho. The other option at that price, it was Josh Curran, right? I'm really, really keen on Josh Curran and you'll see in the head Ted team that he, he may make a feature. He's in my super coach team and stuff as well. But he was the he was the other option, obviously dual position mid and edge, right? That's a you know, very good guy to look at. And because of the situation I'm in right now, and we're gonna get into a good looping situation this week as well. So if you are unsure what to do with a, you know, two loopers in a Galvin and a Piakura, I'm gonna to explain to that, that to you and hopefully that makes sense. Uh, Cause this is the little bit more advanced way to do the looping strategy rather than just the, you know, putting him in your four and getting your, your five emergency, if that was the, the play for you. So we'll discuss that in a sec as well. But the edge position, I'm a little bit worried about. If I'm holding Piakura longer term, then he's going to come back, which is cool. There was a little bit of a rumor about Kai Pierce Ball potentially being, you know, touch and go for this game. He's fine. It's Tyson Frizzell that's out. And it does sound it's like a probably a two-week injury. I was getting excited about Dylan Lucas, but that is not going to be the case. So avoid that one. He'll go well for a couple of weeks, but it's only a couple of weeks until Frizz comes back. But yeah, Pierce Ball, Salmon, and I do have Burbo. They're my current three edges. So it's not super ideal. But I do think that with the injury to Preston, Salmon becomes a little bit more important to this side in that middle of the park if, if Curran's playing on an edge. They've got a, you know Harrison Edwards coming back who will play a decent amount of lock, potentially you know a little bit of just middle forward as well, eight or 10, a little bit of prop. Uh, so Salmon, I'm expecting somewhere in the 30s for him. So that's viable enough at the moment. And uh, yeah, we'll do a job. But really the goal next week would be to bring in a edge, whether it's a mid-tier guy like a Crichton or something like that, if he goes well, uh, maybe a slightly cheaper guy or a um, yeah, maybe it's a mid-range or, or a top-tier guy like an Eli Katoa, these types of players. I'm looking to, you know, if I'm not getting Hines next week, that would be where I'm looking at, whether it's, you know, Karaz to a top-tier edge or um, it is one of those cheaper guys like a Crichton, like I said. So that's where I'm at this week. I thought, you know, I could set that wing fullback position up Gutho is someone that's going to be really important through the buy period as well. So again, check out that impact of the next three. If you want to learn more about those guys, he's not going to play Origin. They have a pretty good setup through that period. Uh, I believe a buy in 16. So we've got nine, uh, nine for them and 16. So we get them for 13, 14, and I think around 20 as well for the Eels. So you get them for you know, 13, 14, 17, 19 out in round 20. And by that stage, you'd definitely be trading Gutho, I think, given he's not a you know a main stayer in your you know a keeper in your side long term, but that's that's where I'm looking at in my team is is starting to make moves, getting myself ready for the buy period because I've used a lot of trades, obviously you know double trading 
each and every week, max trading for what we are allowed right now. And if I can slowly set myself up for round 13 with guys that have potential to make some money, if Gutho scores you know anywhere near what he what we think he will at um you know in the, in that fullback position last year it was a 54 when uh, Moses is out. Career he's got a 60 because he's got 102 in there with Moses out of the side. So and their their run over the next few is is pretty solid as well. So that's where we're going with with Gutho um, on that front. And right, let's just go through the um the looping situation now. I think that'll be cool to to go through. And then a quick overview of my squad before we get to the head to head. So we have Brennan Piakura. He plays in the first game, so you can't loop him otherwise, unless you slot him straight in the four, and then it kind of gets messy from there. Um, given you, you 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 can't really do it properly. So how it works is he starts in your edge, right? You need to at least have a couple of edges in your team. So three would be ideal because if you have two, what happens there? If you have Salmon and Kaipi's Paul only, you just get Salmon's points no matter what, right? Pikura would be here. Um, he he plays, he, he, does, he obviously doesn't play. So you get the first emergency that is an edge on your on your bench. So it takes anyone from interchange one all the way through to emergency eight. And the first one on my list is going to be Jamin Salmon. So you would take him. But in this scenario, I have Kaipis, Paul Salmon, and Ben Chavojevic, who is a edge slash center, which is cool. So how it works is if I like both of the scores here, so I have two extra players, right? Hughes and Salmon, okay? Because I've got 21 minus the two in Galvin and Piakura, that's 19. So I have two extra players, Hughes and Salmon. If I like both of their scores, what we do is we move Galvin up for Levi. Let's use Levi as example. Galvin moves up to Levi. Uh, I don't take Levi's score and I don't take Ben Chavojevic's score because Levi will be down there in emergency eight. Ben Chavojevic stays in emergency seven, right? What I'm, what that means there is I get Galvin gets uh, replaced here because he doesn't play. He gets replaced by our first emergency in Hughes, okay? And then in this scenario, our second emergency Salmon will get replaced. He, sorry, he'll, be, he'll replace Pierre Kura's score because he didn't play either. So Piakura didn't play, you get the edge emergency. And then Galvin didn't play in the interchange one, you get the Hughes emergency. Awesome, that's the first one. Number two, if you like Sam Hughes' score only, if he comes out and gets a 37 and Salmon gets a 21. Okay, from that scenario there, all you have to do is move Ben Trebojevic up for Levi. Okay, so Burbo moves up. The reason we move him up into interchange one is if I want to take him over Salmon, Salmon gets a head knock, whatever it is, touch wood, he's not going to get a head knock. But I don't want Salmon's score, therefore I want Burbo's edge score. So I put Burbo ahead of Salmon in our list there. He would move up to Levi. Awesome. That means I get Pikura, doesn't play, I get Burbo's score. I then don't get Salmon's score. I get Hughes' score because I've got the one emergency pops in to the starting side. So Burbo is in interchange one. I don't get Piakura's score because he's not playing. I get Burbo's score. He moves into the starting side and then all of my interchange and emergencies shuffle up one position. So my interchange, they don't actually do this. It just locks them out and you get their scores. So Lustig is now int one, Gutherson int two, Strange interchange three, and then Hughes is my fourth interchange and I keep his score. That's awesome. And the last one is the easiest one yet. If I like Salmon only, okay, so I don't like Hughes' score, Salmon's in at six, Hughes gets an eight, Salmon gets a 35. I leave it exactly as it is because all of my interchanges are playing. Awesome, you get all those scores. I don't get Piers Kura's score because he doesn't play. My first replacement is Jamin Salmon in number six. I leave Burbo where he is because I don't want his score. I want Salmon's score. He's the one that goes straight into my team. Even though he's six emergency, he is the first edge on my replacements. He goes in straight for Piakura's score and I don't get Hughes's score, even though he's my first emergency. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, go back and listen to that again um, because that's the three options that you have, which is cool. So, and Galvin, you only use him in that uh, in that first scenario. He's the only, That's the only time you move Galvin. Otherwise he can just stay in emergency eight. So there you go. All right. Rest of my team, I'm very, very happy with having Grant in there. Awesome, good to have him back. Murray scoring well, Terrell May, great. Cotter, great. I have um, you know, I have mid cover with Hughes, with Salmon. Awesome, that's great. Edge, we already spoke about pretty heavily, but happy with Kaipis Paul. 
Half, I'm going to stick with Fogarty as captain for the week. I do think Harry Grant is an awesome captaincy option as well. And same with Murray this week. Although those minutes last week, I hope that hopefully his knee has, you know, the flare hasn't, uh, you know, isn't still there. And he's, he's you know, more chance of getting back to that 70 odd minutes, which would be great. But he did play really, really well in 61 minutes last week and did, you know, scored great. And then uh, so half position, I do have, you know, strangers cover four halves at the moment. I also have Galvin when he comes back in a few weeks. So I do see that it's probably not worth absolutely overloading in the halves position. Galvin is out in round 13. So if I go Fogs and you know, Nico Hines, then that could really work out. Um, Hacho obviously plays round 13 as well. So that's something to you know, think about as well if you're holding him longer term or he's gone in the next bunch of weeks. Center position, I have Taylor May, Talangi, Jacob Kiraz, Ben Chaboyevich and Ethan Strange. So we're absolutely loaded up in the centers at the moment. No problems in there. I doubt I'll be making any center moves over the next bunch of weeks. That's for sure. Uh, so that's that. Talangi just seems really safe, guys, as the only real cash cow of the week. So I want to keep making money. I need to catch up as well. And I think he can score pretty well there. Uh, so center's pretty good. And then the wing fullback we spoke about as well. I, I'm you know, great to see Pap come back. I'm expecting a fairly decent week for my side, especially if Gutho comes in and does pretty well. We you know, can't really get too much worse apart from you know any injuries and stuff for my back guys in, in Taylor May, Rapana, Kiraz, and Lusik. It can't really get too much worse. So hopefully an improvement on the back end from those guys and we can have a you know, have a really cracking week. So that's my team. That's my thoughts. Karen was an option. We had Ponga was a potential option. But yeah, I wanted to leave a little bit of cash for next week so I can make some other moves in the side like get a Heinz back or something like that and get a top tier captaincy option although Fogarty is absolutely banging at the moment um now Butcher was an interesting one but I've uh, actually followed a bunch of these guys on Instagram I was reaching out to a few of them to try and do a fast five uh questions segment I actually made up individual questions for him sent them away but they all go into the request so anyway I'm following him him and his partner are going to be having a baby in the next month or so so yeah, it's an interesting one. To, you know, we saw what happened with uh, Tarpany last last year, and um, you know he had a had that week off with the when his wife partner, not sure, so wife um, had the baby. So yeah, that was the thing with Nat. Um, on that front, Eli Katoa's potential option. Yeah, they're the kind of five I was looking at. We've decided to go with Gutho. Let's see, and hopefully it um it pans out because he he can have really good stretches of games, and I hope that hope that is the case with him, and. Uh, yeah, that was the, all my trade thoughts. Let's go to the head-to-head team now. All right, a couple of fun trades here in the head-to-head squad. We have decided to play with 16 again, which is a bit wild, a bit rogue, but it is a head-to-head team, and we're here to make money, and we're here to make good moves, and I'm okay to suffer a little bit. If the rest of my team goes well, then happy days, but Taintu Picky and Satili Tupanua, our other green dot that would make 17, are being traded out. Um, I'm done with Satili. He's, what's he made? Less, he's gone down 5k overall, but made five last week. Off the bench, not good. Kaipis, Paul, and Josh Curran coming to the side. So I'm pretty excited by those moves. There, um, That leaves me with 2k in the bank. So what I've actually done is been able to hold Hosking as well as Cleary. So right now, my emergencies are Joe Chan, Piakura, Cleary, and Hosking. And then have Galvin in there to you know, round out my, my red dots for the week. So... Yeah, I'm really happy with those pickups. It, it leaves me in a pretty good spot in my mid and edge position. I yeah, was a little bit down on troops in that in that side of things. As you can see, I'm still playing Salmon in that position after trading Curran and Peace Paul in. So that does leave me with Hosking returning next week and then Pikura in a few weeks. I've got enough edge and mid cover at the moment. I am lacking hooker cover. Obviously, Brandon Smith, just keep doing your thing, brother. That'll help. I don't have an extra wing fullback as well but pap turbo drink water if one of them gets injured i have enough money to move them to someone else if that's the case and we can decide what we want to do next week with hosking because he does have a bigger break even i think near the 60 mark now but really if he if whitehead's out for a few more weeks and you know he's come back a little bit too early from his calf issue then hosking is good enough to play big minutes and score really well so i can decide next week if i want to trade him at his 745 price point or if I want to keep hold of him and, and lock him into some good scoring. And whilst holding on to Cleary as well, I think that's really important for my side, given he's very, very likely to be in my team for the entirety of the year. If he can play um, you know, un, unhampered by injury, then that's going to be really cool. 
in the in the squad right now, we have some good points down below in wing fullback. We've got you know obviously a money maker in Talangi. Hopefully, Suli can bounce back into a better type of game. I'm going to captain Terrell. Why not? 65 last week. Hopefully, he can get somewhere near the 60 mark, and he'll be similar to that of Fogarty, but just a tiny bit of point of difference from my team. Um, yeah, going for going for Terrell in this one, even off the bench, I think he'll get good minutes again and not be an issue. Uh, but yeah. Those two guys, Hutcho Fogarty, same as my, my team. Salmon, Kaipis Paul, really solid. Not a problem there at the moment, but we've got, yeah, obviously Hosking to come back. Cotter, Curran, and Terrell May, Brandon Smith up top. So I do expect my overall team to outdo this team, given I've got Cleary and Hosking on my, you know, rotting in my emergencies right now. But the difference here is, you know, how well guys like Turbo and how well Drinkwater can go. And then obviously Curran and, and uh, Brandon Smith. If they all go really well, we can match it with a lot of other teams. Obviously, you know, the overall rank is suffering a little bit, but I did prioritize money making last week and holding on to my top tier gun in Cleary. And you know, things will improve on the back end here. And again, in the head to head team, it's just trying to focus on getting things right, spending some trades early, and then I can start to conserve through the middle part of the year. So yeah, looking to make some money this week, obviously with a bunch of these guys. We're relying on Hughes and it looks like that's you know going to work out okay. There's some talk about him moving back to the bench, but it will be more minutes than 14. That's the hope anyway, as long as he doesn't drop the ball. So head to head team, that's where we're at, at the moment. We've got some, you know, we've been winning a lot of our matchups. So that's all that matters in this head to head squad at the moment. I want to you know make sure to show you guys the head to head side of things and and the strategy that's required. And at the moment, it's these two mid rangers in Kaipis Paul and Josh Curran that can get us some good points make us some money and uh, yeah, do a good job. And that's exactly what we want in the head to head right now. And uh, just continue to build on these guns across the season is gonna be the play. So we're all set in wing fullback right now. We've got Cleary and Fogarty, two guns in that, in that scenario. Terrell May, I think is a top tier gun for the for the season. Hopefully Kaipis Paul can get there. We've got Hosking as another gun and we'll, we'll slowly build on those numbers as the um, as the year goes by. And we'll see what you know Josh Curran ends up being you know, what type of gun he ends up being in this one. So that's the head-to-head -head team, guys. Slightly different strategy, obviously. Um, you know, not as stressed about just that equal accumulation of points each and every week. Started really well. Had a poor one last week with a low score, which has dented the, the overall rank, but still winning my, uh, a lot of, you know, winning a lot of my leagues and in a really good position. Fourth, second, sixth, second, second, fourth, seventh, third, fifth, and second. So not a problem at all. At the moment, if we start to, you know, if we get a loss this week, I do think that over the next few, we'll, we'll make that back anyway with, you know, Cleary returning and, um, you know, making moves from the next few weeks. So that's the uh, two teams, guys. Thanks for listening to the trades one. There's so much strategy in this each and every week. And I hope the looping uh, scenario helped you guys out. And uh, if you're holding P. Kura, you can try and do that yourself with the two guys that I'm using it with. So, yeah, if, you, if, you, if you're going to try the exact strategy that I've got, most people will have a Galvin and P. Kura. Um, or you know, Joe Chan or something like that you could do with given he plays tonight as well. So that's a fun one to do. And uh, yeah, let me know if you're going to do that and have a cracking week. See you guys.